Today I would like to talk to you a little bit about the ancient Greek Olympics. I will t be talking about the three most important aspects of the games, origin, events, and famous athletes. Now I would like to talk to you about the origin. The Olympics began in 776 BC. They went on until 393 AD. That's 1,169 years. They could have been going on longer, but the first written mentions of the games were in 776 BC. The Greeks started the Olympic Games for Zeus, the gods, and the goddesses. The games were called the Olympic Games because they were in Olympia, hence the name. The Greek gods also lived in Olympia. Another reason why they started the games were to provide unity to the Hellenic world. The mythical way that the Greeks created it was that Hercules, son of Zeus and Alcmene, started it near the western coast of Peloponnesia. Eventually, in the first century BC, standards started to decline. Rome conquered Greece and cheated to win. They would demand prizes from the Greeks, even if they didn't win. Around the third century AD, the infrastructure started to break down due to floods, earthquakes, and war with the Romans. This is how the Olympics eventually ended. Unlike the modern Olympic Games, which have too many events to count, the ancient Olympics only consisted of eight events. Discus, long jump, javelin, equestrian, running, boxing, wrestling, and pancration. In discus, athletes threw disc-shaped objects for distance to win. In the long jump, athletes would throw weights behind them to gain thrust. The long jump was for distance just like the discus. The javelin is a wooden rod that you would throw to win. Javelin is another distance event. Unlike the past events, chariot racing was an actual racing event and not a distance event. The owners of the chariots would win, not the athletes. This was common back in ancient Greece. There were four running events, but they are considered as just one event. The event is fairly simple. Boxing is much like modern boxing in that an athlete won when his opponent was knocked out or gave up. Wrestling was also much like mo modern wrestling. <laughs> Finally, pancreation is the last sport. Pancreation is a very dangerous sport where the only rules were that an athlete cannot bite his opponent or gouge out his eyes or nose. The event is a combination of wrestling and boxing. These events were all the events in the ancient Greek Olympics. I would now like to bring up the last aspect of the ancient Olympic Games, famous athletes and all about them. First, I would like to start off with Leonidas of Rhodes. Leonidas was a stadium athlete and won for 12 years. According to legend, Leonidas was faster than Usain Bolt. However, there is evidence that he took several serious injuries. To match his years, he had 12 victories, four of them the stadium. He also won premier sprint events and the race in armor, with his final three victories at the age of 36. That's pretty old back then. He competed in the ancient games from 164 to 152 BC. In conclusion, Leonidas of Rhodes is the greatest runner of all time and arguably the most impressive Olympian in the ancient games. Next we have Kainska of Sparta. Kainiska of Sparta was an inspiration for athletes now and back then. At the time, women weren't allowed to compete in the Olympics at all, yet she evaded the rules and won two times. She was a charioteer and won the four-horse chariot race in 396 BC and 392 BC. She's the daughter of the king of Sparta. Now we have the six-time Olympic champion, Mylon of Croton. Mylon of Croton was a huge and gluttonous wrestler. To honor the gods, he carried an entire cow, killed it, and ate it all in a single day. At 38 years old, after a long battle, he wearily surrendered to Timosephios. Timosephios was 28 years old. This would be his final battle. Mylon would later die to wolves. Another muscular figure was Diogoras of Rhodes. Diogoras was a boxer who won the 79th Olympiad. He was nicknamed Euthymechis, meaning fair fighter, because he wouldn't ever sway, duck, or weave out of his opponent's way. 
Diogoras had a very sad death, however. At the height of his glory, Diogoras watched one son win, then the next. The crowd then lifted him to their shoulders. At some point, a man said, Surely it doesn't get any better than this. You might just die. No one knows how, but Diogoras did exactly that. Next we have military leader Phalos of Croton. Phalos of Croton competed in the late 6th and early 5th BC in the Pentathlon. He has been rumored that he jumped over the entire 15.2 meter sandpit, just notching over 16 meters. Not only was he an amazing athlete, but a firm favorite thanks to his heroism in battle. He was hailed by all of Greece after a victorious battle at Salamis in 480 BC. Finally, I will be talking about the Pancration star, Theogenes of Th Th Thasos. Theogenes was born on an island called Thasos. He spent his early life touring the Mediterranean and serving as a priest to the Temple of Heracles. Church locals believe he was God himself. He won Pancration for the 76th Olympiad and was said to have over 1,400 victory wreaths. Thank you for watching this presentation.